calling the meeting to order. Um, roll call. Rick Raleigh is out. Um, Mr. Arce. Here. Mrs. Buchanan. Here. Uh, Mr. Benda is out and Maria Opara is here. Mr. Arce, will you, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Following information was posted on the April 4th board agenda during the public board member, Dennis K. Bender will participate via teleconference from the superintendent's conference room. The teleconference location is open to the office during, to the public during public session and any member of the public has an opportunity to address the board from the teleconference location in the same manner as if that person attended the regular meeting location. I would like to provide an update that Mr. Bender is still recovering and will not be participating remotely. Mr. Arce, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Ready, begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kylie, do we have any public comments pertaining to closed session? We do not. I'm going to have the clerk to read the closed session items. <laughs> Surprise. Okay. We need to go into closed session to discuss the following. Number one, pupil personnel expulsion cases, EXP number 15, 23-24 through EXP number 22, 23-24. Four, admission case AD number four, 2324, revocation of expulsion case EXP number 19, 2223, and readmit case AR number 12, 23-24. Number two, conference on litigation, government code section 54956.9A, current litigation, 10 cases, CIVDS 1907172201183 and 2022956 CIVSB 2111303 number 2227023 Number 2304865, number 2314073, and number 2322171, two, Government Code Section 54954.5C and 54956.9D2 and E1, Anticipated lit Litigation, One Case, 2020 21. Uh, dash five. Number three, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, reassignment, transfer, leave, title, certificated and classified employees. Number four, public employee appointment, resignation, retirement, reduction, title for certificated and classified employees. Five, conference with labor negotiator, employee negotiator, Dustin Conrad, Employee Organization, Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association. Six, Conference with Labor Negotiator, A, Agency Negotiator, Dustin Conrad, Employee Organization, California School Employees Association. Conference with Real Property, or number seven, Conference with Real Property Negotiator, Government Code 54956.8. Uh, negotiating Parties, Matt Schulenberg, Apple Valley Unified School, <clears throat> Number eight, Security Matters, Government Code, Section 54957, Consultation with Apple Valley Unified School District, Chief of Police. And number nine, Superintendent's Evaluation. I ask for a motion to go into closed session. So moved. All, All second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We'll be back about 7 o'clock.
Calling the meeting to order. Roll call. Uh, Maria Opara is here. Uh, Mr. Raleigh is out. Mr. Gar uh, Arcee? Here. Mrs. Amanda Buchanan? Here. Mr. Dennis Bender is out. Um, I have somebody to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you please rise? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Before we get started, I would like to say that the board appreciates and supports our educational partners input at our meetings. Engagement by members of the public and civic matters is the cornerstone of our democracy. Everyone should have a chance to express their opinions within the guidelines the board has established for its meetings so that we are able to conduct the meeting effectively and efficiently. During the meeting, there will be time for the public to comment on matter not on the agenda. In addition, members of the public may comment on specific agenda items after I, as your board president, ask for public comment on an item. Until it is your turn to speak or if you are here just to observe the meeting, please refrain from any behavior that prevents others from participating in the meeting or that disrupts the board's ability to conduct the business of the board. Once again, Thank you very much for taking your time to join us this evening and to be a participant in this duty of serving our students and our educational community. At this time, we would like to pause in a moment of silence to remember AVUSD family member, Nicholas Slate. Thank you very much. Now it's time for the fav favorite part of our day, students, rep student representatives. Rancho Verde Elementary School, Nathan Romero. Nathaniel. <laughs> Sorry about that, I called you Nathan, it should be Nathaniel. Good evening, district board members, administration, and guests. My name is Nate Romero, and I am the student vice president of Rancho Verde. This past year, we have started many new clubs at Rancho Verde. Cooking club is good, a good way for younger and older kids to learn to cook a fun and easy treat to enjoy. In broadcasting, students get to record and edit. They talk about daily announcements like weather, lunch, and anything exciting that may be happening that week. Another exciting club we have started this past year is Friday Night Live. The Student Council goes and learns new leadership skills. It is also open to third and third and up. Speaking about FNL, we just recently had a field trip. We went to the University of Redlands and learned so many fun and educating things about leadership. Some clubs that are not new, but continuing. Our designing club, robotics, Harry Potter club, book club, cross country, esports, and clay club. Our esports team is looking forward to competing against other schools on May 14th. They will compete in Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. We have high hopes for a Roadrunner victory. 
Here are some pencils our design club made for you. I get two. I get one. Yeah, I made on it. This past year, we have had lots of fun and exciting field trips. Sixth grade just recently learned about the physics of roller coasters on their Disneyland trip. Fifth grade went back in time to explore the gold rush on their Calico trip. Several grade levels have attended the AVCI campus and got to see the solar flares jumping off the sun. Third grade went to VVC and had a musical and cultural experience. Our fourth grade will soon be visiting the Mitsubishi Cement Center. As usual, Rancho Verde students are going to be starting state testing next week. Younger kids have been adop adapting to uh, the older kids' classes and getting them ready by making inspirational posters to hype them up. Events happening this month include Solar Eclipse Day. All students will be going outside with solar eclipse glasses to watch the moon pass between the sun and earth. Casting a shadow, May many younger and older students are very excited. We would like to give our solar eclipse glasses for you to be able to have wherever you are on that day. April 8th, be ready from 10, 15, 10 a.m. till about 12, 15 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. I love this so much. I'm ready. Uh, Mariana Academy, Victoria Reyes, Alexa Duran, Mandy Wilkinson, and Savannah Tandler. Good evening, President Okpara, Board Member, Superintendent Nelson, Cabinet Members, Faculty, Family, and Guests. My name is Alexa. I'm an eighth grade student at Marion Academy and also part of our leadership group. Hello, my name is Victoria and I'm an eighth grade student at Marion Academy and I'm also a part of our leadership group. Hello, my name is Mandy. I am a seventh grade student at Marion Academy and a part of our leadership group. Hello, my name is Savannah. I'm a seventh grade student at Marion Academy and a part of our leadership group. We are here this evening to share some of the exciting things that happened so far during the 2023-2024 school year and to provide a glimpse into the last couple months that we have left at Marion Academy. We have not only learned engaging information from our teachers within the classroom, but we have also had many fun learning experiences outside of the classroom too. Let's flash back to August 2023. Back to school excitement was in the air. As students reunited with friends and or found new ones, they also met their new teacher. Back to school night was a success at giving an opportunity for families to tour campus and meet their child's teacher. Also during August, our volleyball team started practice. Our team made huge improvements throughout the season to raise excitement for science. Science. Dr. and Mrs. Gillette hosted Seam Fair Assemblies. In September, our school started many different after school clubs. One club is called the Better Builders. Students are able to use math and carpentry to build things for our campus. We also started an eSports club where students are learning how to communicate effectively and problem solve as a team to be successful. Garden clubs started getting busy with students making the campus beautiful and learning how to grow fresh produce. TK Kinder Club started where our littles get to explore arts, science, and reading. We also had our first scholastic book fair of the year and our first field trip opportunity with some 7th and 8th grade students visiting a college fair at the Rose Bowl. Afterwards, students were able to enjoy a UCLA football game. October started with 1st and 2nd grade field trips to the pumpkin patch. 
then ended with a costume parade around campus where parents were invited to come watch. The office also had an on-campus sugar treating station. At the beginning of November, middle school had their first dance. We had many students participate and enjoy their night dancing and hanging out with friends. Robotics club, reading club, and academic powwow clubs were also started. This also marked the end of trimester one where students received awards for their hard work. Ending November, we were thankful to have time to spend with our families. December was a really exciting month, starting off with a visit from Santa on a fire truck. Our eighth grade AVID and leadership students had the opportunity to visit Cal State San Bernardino. They were able to tour the campus and see what programs were available before heading out to break. Lower grade students put on their winter programs for families. As January started the 2024 year, we celebrated the 100th day of school and then quickly moved into February with both girls and boys basketball teams in full swing. Our coaches did an amazing job helping our students make progress throughout the season. Middle school students were able to enjoy a bit of fun after school at the Day of Hearts dance, where our leadership class worked hard to crown an eighth grade king and queen of hearts. Students and families also enjoyed our STEM night at the AVCI. We ended February with a sixth grade field trip to the Grainer Holt Center. March began with us celebrating Read Across America with Spirit Days and a family shopping Scholastic Book Fair, then a fifth grade field trip to Riley's Farm. It was the end of the second trimester, so students received awards for their hard work in school. We had our after-school talent show club start. We had many participants from all grade levels. The overall students that took the show were our very own eighth grade students. What a fun thing to participate in and win. Before they head out to high school in a few short months, eighth graders got the opportunity to tour their prospective high school's fourth grade visit in Knott's Berry Farm from for the California History Program, and we wrapped up March with our seventh grade field trip to Medieval Times. It is hard to believe we are already in April. As an eighth grade student, I can't believe I am in my last two months of middle school and will soon be a freshman in high school. This month, our leadership class is working hard to provide an opportunity for our third through fifth grade students to enjoy a dance for the first time. We are excited about viewing the solar eclipse on the eighth, our first day of state testing, Kindergarten, second grade, and fourth grade are excited about upcoming field trips to AVCI. Ending April, the hard work of our running club will be showcased as our middle school cross-country team races. As May approaches, we look forward to the end of the year awards and activities for all grade levels. Personally, I am most looking forward to our eighth grade field trip to Knott's, our eighth grade block party, and especially my eighth grade promotion. By the way, we hosted an annual Mariana family picnic for students and families to come together for food, family, music, fun, and games. We hope you all join us at Mariana starting at 4.30 p.m. May 8th. Thank you all for your time and support. Before we take our seats, we would like to give you potted plants grown by our Garden Club students. I can't contain myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. Do I have to pick you up? <laughs> Thank you so much. I got better. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> How does it premiere? It smells so loose. Thank you. 
Now the other thing is there like we have more tools for this and other tools that don't work so well. Really quick, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of our uh, very educated and micro engineers. Yesterday was a uh, professional PK working day and today is a lot very interesting working day. We appreciate everything you do for us. So how about that? Last week we had a pretty good round. Thank you. Thank you so much. Granite Hills High School, Hannah Foger. Good evening, Executive Cabinet, Board Members, and Attendees. My name is Hannah Forger, the Junior Class President at Granite Hills, and I have so many wonderful things to share with you all tonight. Last month, we held our annual district field day as a part of our Special Olympics Unified Champion School Collaborative. Students from both Granite and Apple, High School, Apple Valley High School partnered with 252 students with special needs to participate in a day of games and fun activities. We played games like bowling, basketball, go-karts, running, walking around the track, and a lot more. It was an incredible day, and we all had so much fun. Our theater program is very busy getting ready for our production of Mean Girls the Musical. We will have two show weekends, April 12th at 7 p.m., April 13th at 2 p.m. and at 7 p.m., April 19th at 7 p.m. and April 20th at 2 p.m. and at 7 p.m. And after I finish speaking, I'll pass out flyers for you all. We hope you can make it out. And as a part of the cast, I can say everyone is working extremely hard. And it's going to be an incredible show. On April 17th, students from theater, choir, and band will be performing at the grand opening of the old AMC building. The building will be used as a performing arts center for the high desert. Today, our choir students left for their annual tour. This year's tour is taking place in Chicago. While in Chicago, the students will be competing in schools from all over the country, as well as visiting multiple museums, attending a Blue Man group show, going to the Chicago Observatory, and going to other events, shows, and museums. This is a four-day trip, and it is a great learning experience for all of them. The tour is something that is very strongly anticipated each year by our students and all of the chaperones. Our ASB officer class has been working very hard to promote both prom and grad night. This year's prom is held locally at the market at Town's End, and the theme is Hollywood. Lights, camera, prom. We have an amazing DJ set who will actually be making a debut on campus next Tuesday to give students a glimpse of what is to come. Grad night is at Universal Studios Hollywood, which was chosen by the senior class, and we are extremely excited about it because it's going to be 12 hours of pure fun. Our last time rally for the year is happening on Wednesday, April 17th. Our theme for the rally is Tropical Vacation, and we're going to be highlighting our spring sports and giving a shout-out to our senior class of 2024. It'll be their last high school pep rally, and we're going to miss them all so much, so it's going to be a big goodbye. We're working hard to make tropical Hawaiian decorations for the pep rally and coming up with fun games to match our theme. Our CTE programs are competing at Skills USA today and the next several days, and we look forward to their success. Our mechatronics team is helping to 3P and return to nationals again. Also, for the first time in our school's history, students submitted a Chapter Excellence Level 2 application, and we are proud to announce that we are now a Silver Level Chapter this year. Additionally, our school earned the Best Communities for Music Education Award from the NAMM Foundation. From college to careers, activities, athletics, Cougars really do do it all. Speaking of athletics, this past winter season, we had a total of 16 all-league selections from basketball, soccer, and water polo. We had 12 male wrestlers make the CIF Individual Tournament and 19 female wrestlers. 
Boys Wrestling received their plaque for being the first for being CIF State Program of the Month in March. Our softball team is currently first place in DSL with a seven-game win streak. They have a huge chance of winning their first league title. The big game will be on the 23rd against Barstow. Baseball is doing incredible. We have a new coach in place who is great, and this is a huge change from last year. We're excited to see how the team will continue to grow. Swim is third in DSL, and despite having a smaller team, they're doing great. Boys Tennis is currently in a tie for a first in league. They'll have the big showdown game versus Silverado for the title next week. As for golf, we have 20 golfers, 12 of which are freshmen, and they're all doing incredible, and we look forward to seeing how they grow throughout the rest of the years. Track and field is doing very solid, as always, and many will be going to CIF. Overall, our athletics programs are doing amazing and are continuing, are, are continuing to solidify themselves as top programs in the high desert. That's all I have for tonight, but as always, Moon and Gray lead the way. Thank you, Anna. Apple Valley High School, Sophia Brunt. Great. <laughs> only, only two more times you have to do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to miss you too, bud. All right. Good evening, members of the board and attendees. My name is Sophia Brandt, and I'm the Apple Valley High School Associated Student Body Line President. Now, before I start with what our school has been up to, I actually wanted to share my college plans with you all, because you've not only been such an intrinsic part of my entire student career in the district, but also my senior year. Um, so I'm committed to UC Irvine. I'm super excited. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm planning to double major in English and history with a minor in creative writing. And I'm also one of their Regent Scholars and I'm part of the Honors College. So I'm super excited and thank you for all my, all your help. Man, I love applause. All right, now I'll be sharing with you what our students and staff have been up to as well as some of our goals for the upcoming month. Due to some scheduling issues, we sadly uh, haven't been able to find a new date for Mr. Sun Neville that will work with everyone's busy schedules and previously planned events, since we do always have a million things going on here at Apple. So the event has sadly been canceled, but we still made sure to give the contestants their prizes from our local sponsors, as well as their wanted posters that our graphics class printed for them. But there is one of our contestants in the house tonight, story and style. So if you guys want a performance, do you want to do the dance or no? <laughs> you're, you're good? We're good? Okay. I do have the music on my phone, but if you don't want to, that's okay. All right. ASB has also started selling prom tickets for our Into the Jungle themed prom, and we are so excited. Elections are also this week. Voting is tomorrow, so our ASB students have been campaigning for their new positions, and we had interviews yesterday. They went great. And let me just say, my favorite part of interviews is when we ask everyone a silly question, which usually involves dancing or singing. It's a great way to get future ASB members out of their shell, since they'll have to be sociable and outgoing leaders throughout the school year. My favorite question I ever received was before my junior year when I was asked to impersonate somebody on the interview panel, and I impersonated Mrs. Seeley whom I love dearly, but also scares me. Um, I credit the job to that question and that question only. ASB also put on tours for the incoming eighth graders after coming back from spring break, leading them around campus to experience the amazing elective options they have for next year. Each class and pathway put on interesting presentations to showcase their programs. Then we held high school awareness night with performances from cheer and choir, where it was the parents' turn to visit Apple and see where their students will be spending their next four years. Juniors have been doing state testing for the past few weeks, and we've been helping them out uh, put their best foot forward by providing snacks and time in the gym at lunch each day to play games and socialize. Our skills students also left today after school to head down to Ontario to compete and hopefully come out as the best of the state. We're wishing them so much luck this weekend, and I'm confident that there will be plenty of medals to announce at next month's meeting. Our students are also constantly working to improve our school, district, and county. We had our high school student advisory meeting the Friday before spring break and met with staff members to discuss real courses of action to better Apple Valley High School, and we have detailed and doable plans to make change. Sun Devils also represented at the county student advisory panel in March, presenting their solutions to issues that affect San Bernardino County as a whole. 
When it comes to athletics, spring sports, golf, swim, baseball, softball, and track have been working hard as always. We recognized our Senior Athletes of the Year representing soccer, volleyball, tennis, track and field, cross country, baseball, football, and golf. Congratulations to Noah Seeley, Samantha Most, Jayla Justice, Cadence Bonneau, Sherman Klein, and Ryan Martinez, who are all incredibly talented on and off the court, field, track, and turf. There are so many exciting things happening at Apple Valley High School, and I want to thank you all for your continued support. We couldn't give our students any of these incredible opportunities without your help. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to make a minor change in the schedule, in the agenda. We are moving item number D, recognition and presentation, up next before the board comments. That way, all of our younger student presenters get to see some amazing things that we're recognizing tonight. Can I have the board? <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Sophia, where are you? I followed you last time, too. <laughs> So we have begun recognizing um, people in our community, our school community, for meeting our values. And tonight I'm proud to be, um, I, we've invited the peers group from Apple Valley High School. So if you're a peer student and you're here, would you please come up and just stand here? I do not have these organized, so we're going to do this and, and we'll get you all together. And then... After I read a little bit about peers, and I'd like the um, peers teacher and the other support people to come up and stand with them, please, too. It's hard to talk with you guys behind me. <laughs> Apple Valley Unified School District is fortunate to have a long history of students who serve as peers at Apple Valley High School and Granite Hills High School. Over the years, I have witnessed the peers show up and support others as they are trained to do so in some very unique situations. Including, there have been times where we've called them to other schools, where there's been a tragedy and support is needed. Some school years, the peers train and may not be called to a crisis, and other years, it is different. This year has been extremely different. Under the leadership of Senorita Emlyn Diaz, and crisis management leads Christian Rees and Amy Bateman, this group of students and staff who uphold our values of dignity, community, authenticity, and service are being recognized tonight. So I'm so proud of this group of kids for a variety of reasons. Some of them I know because of peers. Some of them I know because they served as student um, advisors over the course of years. But all of them are extremely talented and brave to take on such an, uh, a role to be empathetic and supportive. And so if you're a family member of these kiddos, you should be so proud because they're going far, no doubt. You were ready. Katie Garcia. Kyle Grego. Newton is not here. Oh, help. <laughs> <laughs> that one I, I know. <laughs> um, Alec Mendez. Kayla Peterson. Brooklyn. Did see Sorian's um, video for um, Mr. Sun Devil, so I was I told him that I was really proud of him that he got put in the bunch. <laughs> 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 Hold on, Kyle. 
I want to be sure everybody knows I owe um, the advisors a certificate as well for their wall. Yeah, some of you go on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Board comments? Mrs. Buchanan? All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to all of the students. Um, it is always our favorite part. Um, and thank you for the eclipse glasses. We were just talking in the back about how we actually will probably get to see it. We didn't think we were going to get to see much. Um, so we will definitely be using these. We'll have to take a group picture with <laughs> Devon. Um, so welcome back after spring break. And we are in the home stretch now to the end of the year. This is when there's going to be something on your calendars like every day at school. So just keep chugging along, get through your state testing and all of those end of the year activities. Um, I was able to attend field day and it was such a fantastic experience. It was a little bit chilly, but it was so worth it. Um, it was great watching. I, I don't know if anybody was there, get, uh, Mr. RC and Ms. Akpara with the parachute. I don't know if you guys got to see that, but they looked just like the young little kids that are out there playing. I, I just had fun watching them with the kids. Um, but I did get a chance to play basketball with a young lady named Grace. Um, I didn't really play. I don't know what I'm going I joked that I was playing fetch. Like she would throw the ball and then the wind would blow it and I'd go get it and give it back to her, um, which is about the extent of my athletic ability. So I went and retrieved it and brought it back to her. Um, but thank you to everybody who made that possible. Um, just the staff, the students, the bus drivers that got the kids there. It's just thank you. Um, I also got to see Moana Jr. So I don't know if anybody got out to Sycamore Rocks to see that, but we have some really talented best fiends coming up. Um, and oh, man, the like vocal gifts on those kids, the young lady that played Moana and even Moana's grandma, they were top notch. So whatever high school gets those actors and actresses that are coming up out of Sycamore Rocks, like I think they're going to end up on uh, Broadway one day. So, um, <clears throat> so Last week was actually spring break for the district that I teach in. So I got to spend my spring break making the rounds to all of, well, not all, but many of your fantastic schools or our fantastic schools. And it was just, it was wonderful. So I got to make it out to a lot of schools that I hadn't had the opportunity to visit yet. So um, last week I made it out to Sandia, Mariana, Desert Knolls, Sycamore Rocks, Apple Valley High School, High Desert Premier, and then also Rio Vista. Um, and so it was just a lot of fun. I know my kids every morning, um, they were on break also, and I would come home and I would be dressed like this. And they were like, Mom, I thought you were on break. We woke up. You weren't here again. What happened? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm busy. So um, they were confused. 
but uh, it was so worth it. And I was so glad to have that opportunity to be able to get out. Um, I have to say all of the principals have such pride in their schools and as they rightfully should, because the schools were just amazing. Like I was just, I just wanted to spend like a whole day. Like I really probably needed a whole day, although they probably wanted to push me out so they could like get back to actually doing their job, but, and not having to like show me around, but it was awesome. Um, I saw some like some excellent examples of champs. I did not know what that was before I went because I did not go to the safe and civil training last summer. Um, and I actually realized that I had seen it quite a few times in previous visits of other schools, but I didn't realize I saw it until I got to Rio Vista. And then I, then I got it and I was like, oh, I did see that earlier. And then it made sense once I really saw it. Um, so that was like some really great examples. Uh, Apple Valley High School, holy cow, all the CTE programs. It was amazing. Um, I got to like dissect a heart on a screen took me a little bit because I was not able to work the glasses, but it was, and the, the wood shop and it was just amazing. Like they are definitely going to bring some stuff home from skills for sure. Um, I didn't make it out to granite, but I'm sure you guys will too. <laughs> um, Sandia did not know all of our kindergartners take a keyboarding class. Like all I ever got was the little, yes, the recorder, they get keyboarding, which she was explaining the research that's involved in that. And I really wish I had learned that when I was in kindergarten. Um, Mariana, fastest, most efficient, smoothest earthquake drill I have ever seen. Like if I ever have to have an earthquake, like that's where I wanna be. <laughs> it was perfect. Um, and then got to see where the new TK buildings are going in out at Mariana. So check that out. And that looked fantastic. And I got a great history of that school and all the history there. Um, Sycamore Rocks. There was one classroom we went in, and I didn't write down the name of the book, but there was an English teacher, and she was teaching. And the, the kids were just so engaged and answering questions. What was it called? Front desk. And they were just completely like, volunteering answers it was very clear like they were so involved um so that was really you could tell like they were just they were enjoying everything that was going on and it was not a dog and pony show because i was the board member that walked through like they wanted to be there um and then of course high desert premiere i know you said you went to top golf when i was there they were playing golf out on the field <laughs> and so that was kind of cool i kind of wanted to go out and play golf but again my athletic ability would be just retrieving the golf balls for the kids. So I did not even try, but I did get to see them tracing um, the skeleton body. So, and I got to see their esports built their room. You're set up for that. They weren't actually using it. So I'll have to go back one time when that's actually in. So, cause that, that's a sport I could play. So at any rate, that is it for me, but I was very thankful that I got to spend the week. Um, so thank you also to Kylie for setting those up for me. Thank you to the principals for showing me around. Um, it was a very, very enjoyable spring break, even though um, I'm sure my kids would have rather I had taken them somewhere else. But I was thankful because I enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arce. I'd, I'd just like to, to also congratulate everyone at Grand Hills High School for just an outstanding field day. As, as Hannah mentioned, there was over 250 st uh, students showed up for that. And there was, there was a, you could tell there's a tremendous amount of work and preparation that went into that. There was in terms of the, all the coordination and uh, the, the, the students, the student helpers that were involved were just fantastic. And uh, again, Ms. Mrs. Akpar and I uh, did have a great time just, and, and uh, Mrs. Buchanan hanging out with the students and just, just having fun and, and just the, the, the smiles on their face, faces and their bright eyes just uh, told us everything we needed to know about just how uh, fulfilling and how satisfying and how special and how memorable that was for them. So thank you, Mr. Powell and Mr. Sluter and all the, all the staff and students involved in that. That was just a tremendous success. I uh, really enjoyed participating in that. Uh, Hannah also mentioned about the, 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 the sports programs that are going on throughout the district, basketball and swimming and track and wrestling and so on. 
And uh, last month, they had the chance to go out and see the, the Grand Hill softball team and the boys' uh, baseball team as they were playing versus, I think it was Sultana. And both both teams were just just rocking it, you know, as, as uh, Hannah was saying. The, and and the, the students and the uh, coaches across the district are just doing a fantastic job. So we are so proud of you. So so thank you for all of your hard work. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a pleasure to go out and see uh, what, all, what all you students are accomplishing. Uh, several of us board members and uh, Mrs. Nelson were able to attend the uh, Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce um, 2024 State of Education program mm -hmm. that was held yesterday. And uh, Apple Valley Unified School District was very well represented mm -hmm. uh, at, at that awards yes. ceremony. In fact, we took the most awards yes. of, of all the, the uh, school districts there. <clears throat> so I just uh, like to give a special congratulations to Granite Hills students Xavier Grimsley and Maria Munoz, and Apple Valley High School students, Cooper Marino, Melanie Rodriguez, Ashley Skurlock, Noel Sherman, and Autumn Ware, who were uh, specially recognized and, and given certificates of recognition uh, at, at that um, award ceremony. So congratulations, students. Uh, as always, uh, you students uh, make us proud in all the things that you do. So, so thank, thank you very much. And then lastly, I just want to mention that uh, 52 schools in California were chosen as what are called schools to watch for their uh, academic excellence and for their overall improvement. And uh, one of the schools in, in our district, Vanguard Preparatory, was uh, rec the staff and students that were recognized for their academic um, excellence and for their overall improvement. So just, just like to congratulate... Congratulate the students and staff at Vanguard. And, and again, those uh, congratulations go out uh, district-wide because there are so many fantastic things that our students are accomplishing. So we are so proud of you. And we can't see, uh, well, can't wait to see what you're going to do next month and in the, in the years ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I have to start by um, saying thank you uh, to all of you that took the time to come out tonight. Um, you could stay home with all the wind, but you came out. Um, and then I need to move forward to thank the counselors, the counselors, academic counselors, um, who um, guided the students who were able to compete for these scholarships and to get them. You know, So uh, sometimes we, we go out and we're so proud of the work the students do, but we don't remember the people who are behind, behind the scenes, making sure that they get this done and they keep reminding them to do so. And to thank the parents who um, encourage their children uh, to be able to uh, apply to, for these scholarships and for these funds, uh, because believe it or not, college is not cheap. Uh, the cheapest part of your life is K through 12. And after that, money begins to flow. Uh, and so we need to begin to pay closer attention to these scholarships. And uh, when it's sent to your schools, uh, it's imperative that you go out and seek them out and get that scholarship. Uh, and yes, I, I went to uh, Apple Valley High School um, to go see a performance um, in the Heights. It was a great performance. And I, I particularly like the disclaimer at the beginning of the show so that it will remind people, if you are not ready to hear everything in this performance, uh, they've already given you the heads up about what, what you will encounter. It was a very beautifully made um, performance. I was very impressed with the students who memorized their lines uh, because believe it or not, um, uh, at some point in your life, you don't even remember the names of your children. Um, <laughs> and you find yourself repeating all of their names until you get to the right one. Um, so to have those students read their lines and they do it in music was uh, particularly impressive. Um, I also um, went to um, Sitting Bull Academy. I have to tell you, I was never as jazzed as I was to get to City Bull Academy on this particular day, but I failed to pay attention to the weather report. Uh, I brought my um, mini pearl hat. I thought I'm gonna do hat day on that day, but it was a windy day. And so I missed an opportunity to model my hat. But I have to say that it is always a pleasure to see the things that the students are doing and the things the schools are doing. 
And I have to be very appreciative of those uh, principals who have to make those last minute decisions um, for the welfare of their children. Uh, you know, so whatever decision you have to make, if it is to for the welfare of your children, I truly appreciate it. And, um, and we'll come again. Whenever you have a new hat day, I'll be there. If you have uh, whatever show you have, I'll be there. I particularly appreciate any time that I'm in front of children. Um, they give me joy. You know, that's, that's my happy place. And so to see me during the, um, the um, field day was a perfect place for me. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to roll in the grass. I wanted to play under the whatever it is that the kids were doing. It was fun. Um, but I have to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. Uh, thank you to the ladies in the cafeteria. I keep saying I'm going to go out and see them. Um, I have gone out to see the transportation people, but I need to go out and see the, the ladies who, who make sure that our children are fed. Um, I thank you very much. Superintendent's comment. I'm with Ms. Okpara about the best part of this job. I was recently asked that question. What's the best part of your job, Trine? And I said, the students. Any day that I get to be on a campus, engaging with students on student voice, watching them perform, watching them athletically, watching them as peers walk across campus the morning that they're headed in to, to deal with a crisis. Um, I am the most proud and fulfilled as an educator in 32 years when I'm with kids. Never changes over those years, never has changed. And I'm super appreciative of the adults that support him, both at home and here in the audience. Um, this month is Autism Awareness Month as well. Um, this is the closest to blue that I have in the closet for a, a blazer other than navy and it didn't really work. And Kylie and I did not coordinate this morning, nor did Kristen Dupree get the call from us either. Sometimes it happens at the district office, we dress the same. Randy, thanks for this. I know I'll be there for the arts walk. Um, uh, so excited about that. Um, Field Day was hosted um, at Granite Hills High School, as you guys have heard. And while it was a wonderful event, the weather wasn't. Mike Sluter is the champion of Field Day. And it goes without saying that I can't um, celebrate Field Day without recognizing the fact that he has championed this, along with um, Principal Adam uh, Powell, uh, the entire administrative and um, team from Grant Hills High School, the student services department, and then all of us just come and have fun. I don't think we really do anything. We always offer to help set up, but it's always handled. It's always handled. Um, it is one of the best days. We go out, we engage with um, our students with special needs, and we engage with um, the peers that are tied to them. And they're not the peers that we recognize tonight, but some of them were there as well. Um, and it's our gen ed students that go alongside these students. And I remember walking up to the football coach and saying to him, I just watched three football players chase a, about a five-year-old across the field. They couldn't keep up with this child. <laughs> and they had their pedometers on because they wanted to see how many steps they were going to get that day. So those are the things that bring joy. Our final high school advisory, I was able to report about a high desert premiere. So I'm so happy to hear that things happened over spring break and you saw that change. Um, but we were able to report about High Desert Premier and Granite Hills High School last month. Um, our final high school advisory was Apple Valley High School the Friday before spring break, as Sophia said. Um, they came out with four major topics. Preparing for life after high school. These are me paraphrasing. So if Sophia doesn't agree, she's going to go, no, Mrs. Nelson, it wasn't exactly like that. But it was preparing for, for high school, um, life after high school, guidance regarding pathways to college and careers. Um, friendliness on campus, this, this sense of friendliness on campus, safe and trusting classroom environments, and staff understanding students out, um, have life outside of school that may look different um, than what they think it looks like, and that every student's home life and what they do after school may look different, and to give a little grace. So those were their topics. Our administration and leadership team is on it with them, and we step back and let them then um, move forward. Last week, I had fun filming a segment with Mayor Scott Nassif at Sycamore Rocks with some of our artists. I have not seen the final product, but I know it took us several takes, and we had fun with the students who were laughing watching us try to do our lines that were scripted, and then we went off script. So you can only imagine what that might have looked like. Um, we talked about the arts and the exciting opening of the Sing Center for the Arts You'll have to attend the snack size is what the, the um, town is calling it, the snack size state of the town to see the video. And it will be hosted out at the 
um, previous theater. They've built a stage. We're kind of excited to see how that turns out, and we will have students there performing. The Eclipse on Monday, um, students will be participating in ABCI. This is a shared space, and while we are there, the public will also be there. But we've worked through the scheduling so that we have um, time for students and time for the public to observe. This morning, I visited ABHS to thank Audrey Garibay. Um, Ms. Okpar and I were going to go down on Tuesday while she was presenting. She's a freshman uh, who has participated in the county superintendent advisory that you heard mentioned earlier. Due to her outstanding pres presentation um, during the multi-days that they, they worked on these with the county superintendent, um, they invited her down on Tuesday to speak to a legislative group. Um, big deal, big deal. And so... We ended up not going down. Um, there was some traffic. There were some things that we were, I was going to be pushed up against a schedule. So I called Mr. Parr and I said, is it okay if I just go thank her on, on one of the days that she's not in something else? And she said, yes, let's do that. Um, so I just have to say, while we were at VMI yesterday, Greater High Desert um, Chamber, which is Valley Morning and, and uh, Insight. These are these, thanks Kylie for helping me. These are these things that we just get used to on our calendar. Um, several of um, the county superintendent staff came over to me to tell me how amazing Audrey's presentation was. So I was able to share that with her this morning and it was fun because Mr. Goodrow was standing there and she thought she might be in trouble because she had to come to the office. <laughs> and all it was was to thank her. Um, she is going to participate in st the, the superintendent um, advisory here in our district because she is not a member of it and is a freshman. So I saw some, some promise, three more years of, of getting some feedback. Skills USA, as mentioned, starts today. Um, we are excited to see our students. I'll be down on Saturday to see them perform and compete. Um, and then I am excited to share with the board and the audience that um, we have found out that of the 10 or a grand $4,000 scholarships, Three are AVHS students. Um, you'll recognize two of these names from yesterday morning. Cooper Moreno from um, Miss Arredondo's MAST 4 um, class. Um, and then Autumn Ware, who is in Miss Arredondo's MAST class. They both were awardees yesterday and now have another scholarship. And actually, Autumn's scholarship was a tie. There was a 10th, the 10th tenth, um, scholarship was a tie, and they had to rescore them, and Autumn came out ahead. So, mm -hmm. um, and then um, Ar 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 Armandeep, is that how you say it? I hate to mess up his name. Gil, in Mr. Osley's AP um, computer science um, class, also took a scholarship. So we've, we've had some exciting days of scholarships that are happening. And then just a comment about um, Nate, this has gone in my garden and I do I have so a garden. Happy. So I'm Please. excited because um, indoor plants, not so good at my, in my place, but outdoor plants, it's okay. So I'm going to grow it and I'll keep pictures of it so that um, we can share those. And I did take a picture of you from this angle so that your mom has a good picture of you. Um, and then Victoria, Alexa, Mandy, Savannah, I am so excited about the picnic. That is one of my favorite days. I come and I listen to the music and I walk around and I get to see everybody having a great time. So that's on my calendar as well. Uh, I heard that um, Ismail made the comment from HGPA that um, he's going to bring us the person that's going to replace him. Nobody can replace you, right? I just want you to remember that you are unique. Nobody replaces you. We just get a new student the following year, and we're excited that we got to have the time with you that we had this year. So you've done an amazing job, and you are going to take the staff out. I do believe that, and that was another part of your um, advisory group wanting to have some competitions with staff. So good job to make that happen. And then Hannah, I'll be at Mean Girls. I will not be participating as Mean Girl, but I'll be watching. <laughs> Although Mr. Um, Conrad sometimes calls me a mean girl, so I'll just tell you that. Yeah, there you go. And then um, I'm so proud of you, Sophia, to be an ant eater. Good choice. You are going to be a star. They are going to love you. So good job. Thanks, you guys. Well, I, I think we've kept you here long enough. I'm sure you have homework to do, so we're going to release the students, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to release the kids to go home. Thank you so much for coming.
Yeah, because he was right in front of him. He did great. He did great. He took his time. Thank you so much. He did. I love this. That's part of this. Yeah. I see a Washington, D.C. photo woman mm. with all of us wearing you. <laughs> in front of the Capitol. <laughs> or actually, in front of the Air and Space Museum. Air and Space Museum. <laughs> I, mine is getting back. I have not. It's crazy. <laughs> My suitcase hasn't even come out. Everything is laying on the couch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> A little, a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> That's good. Okay. <laughs> Your best friend forever. <laughs> I love kids. It's like I just want to watch them. Uh, what did I do? Yeah. All right. Um, now we're going to get to the union representatives. California School Employees Association, CSE, and Nicholas Garrett. He, he did Nick. Yeah, he did indicate that he Mr. Garrett. wanted to speak. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'll be brief. So good evening, uh, Board of Trustees, Cabinet, and all those in attendance. Um, our CSEA negotiations team, along with the district's team, have worked hard all year and have many accomplishments, one of which is signing of the new CBA. However, we have a couple of concerns. Normally, I don't speak, so no news for me is always good news. Unfortunately, we have uh, a health care scare that we're staring down right now. We're looking at a potential increase on the cheapest end of 20%. So our families who are participating in the lowest form of um, our coverage are going to be looking at going from 0% out of pocket to $600 plus a month out of pocket. So, for example, a paraeducator who's taking home about $21 to $2,200 a month is looking at a third of their pay going to a car that they didn't buy. Um, that's definitely a concern. So... We are confident though, through the negotiation process, there's maybe a way out of that. We are also concerned with the constant rise of minimum wage and the loss of buying power those people are also looking at on a regular basis. But again, with continued hard work with the negotiation teams and some of the creative ideas we can come up with, I think we'll be able to come up with a, a way to alleviate some of those concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association, AVUTA, Karen Savers. This is going to be short and sweet because someone educated me not too long ago on how to give a speech. So um, Dustin is great at the end. Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. He's okay. No. Okay, now for the real speech. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make you laugh. <laughs> Good evening, Superintendent Nelson, esteemed board members, cabinet, and guests. I trust everyone had a rejuvenating spring break 
as we now gear up for the final two busy months of the academic year. Tomorrow marks a significant milestone as our negotiation team embarks on its first interest-based bargaining session with our trainer. We eagerly anticipate the collaborative opportunities this new process presents and the accomplishments we can achieve together. Speaking on behalf of Avuda Exec Board and Rep Council, I'm delighted to announce the commencement of our school visits where we'll be providing lunch over the, lot, over the next couple of months to express appreciation to our valued teachers and counselors. Schools have the flexibility to select their preferred visit date, except for Yakaloma, who will be one of our first visits, acknowledging their consistent placement at the tail end of everything. That was per their request. We, they would also like to request that when um, open enrollment comes up, they're not at the tail end. We eagerly anticipate these visits as opportunities just to, dis to dis demonstrate, okay, I'll get it out here, our gratitude to our certificated staff. Additionally, we're in the process of designing and ordering new shirts for our members. On April 26, Avuda will proudly represent teachers at the International Children's Day by distributing books to all attending children. The joy reflected in their smiles as they select a book is truly heartwarming. We extend an invitation for anyone who would be interested in joining us at our stand and participate in handing out books. Now turning to the crucial topic of insurance. As previous men previously mentioned, our insurance premiums, as Nick stated, are going to increase by minimum of 20%. Based on our preliminary assessments, this will translate to monthly increases ranging from anywhere 320 to 525 or more per for our members. We still have to negotiate like Nick was talking about too. We have a $3 million dental reserve that we have to split between the three units and figure that out. Um, however, despite additional funding being allocated to each cell in July, the anticipated re increase in premiums means that our staff will see a decrease in take-home pay next year compared to this year. Regrettably, this coupled with inflation will impose future financial strain on our staff. This is an unfortunate hardship. Thank you and have a great night in solidarity, Karen. The clerk will read out any action taken in closed session. <clears throat> in closed session, the Board of Trustees took action in support of the following recommendation from the superintendent. Public Employee Government Code Section 54957, Discipline, Dismissal, Release, Reassignment, Transfer, Leave, Certificated and Classified Employees. On a motion by Mr. Arce, seconded by Ms. Buchanan, vote three to zero, the Board of Trustees approve the following. To adopt the statement of written charges and the notice of immediate suspension without pay and intention to dismiss and direct the superintendent or her designee to serve the charges concerning permanent certificated employee number 4512. Thank you. The board may approve the agenda as is or add and or pull items from the consent agenda for discussion and or action. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Discussion information. Curriculum and instruction update by Mr. Schlosser. Yes, I'm waiting for my remote to find its mojo. <laughs> I got it. I'll, I'll do this. 
Um, Theta Smith's passing out some handouts to go along. There's two components to, Absolutely. she's going to be coming to speak. So I'm going to leave it at her height. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, I appreciate the effort. I uh, just, there's no need to adjust it again. You only hear from me briefly. Um, by way of introduction though, there'll be two topics here. Uh, first, a brief discussion on cursive writing and where we are with that. As you know, we have a consent item for the adoption of materials that we'll use and uh, Ms. Smith will give background and then a discussion of where we are as we proceed to uh, move towards approval of our Prop 28 plan site by site. So with that, I'll leave it to Theta. Dustin is our remote. <laughs> so we will just tell him when we want a new slide. Okay. So good evening, and as you can see, it's back. Cursive writing is back, that pendulum swing, Dustin. <laughs> Thank you. So, but when did it actually stop? It actually stopped in the year 2010, and the reason why was because the comp, you were a little too fast, Dustin. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do I go back? Hold on one second. Uh, I'm backwards. <laughs> It's not going. It's because he's pushing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. I'll just signal you. Okay, thank you. So when did it stop? It actually stopped in 2010 when the Common Core Standards came about. Um, there was not a standard for cursive writing. Therefore, we quit teaching it. On October 16th in 2023, Governor Newsom had signed into law mandating that cursive writing be taught in California schools within grades first through sixth grade, effective January 24. So think about it. October to January, we had to scramble to find something. We did look at our current um, language arts adoptions, and we realized that in our adoptions in grades third and fourth grade, there was minimal um, but there was some information and lessons in there regarding cursive writing, but it wasn't enough um, for grades first through sixth grade. Make sure I go the right way. So we knew that we had to put together, a, I've never done this, cursive adoption committee and learned so much about cursive writing. Never realized this was our agenda at our meeting. Never realized how many different types of cursive writing there is and different styles. And realizing the differences between each of them. We also had an aha moment that we stopped teaching cursive writing 14 years ago. So a lot of our teachers are very young. They never learned how to write cursive or read in cursive. So we knew that we're going to have to teach our teachers how to write in cursive um, prior to teaching it. Right. Um, we did have to limit out of the variety of styles there are down to the top five. And the reason why we had to limit it to top five was that was the publishers that were available in those styles of cursive writing. So these are the ones that we had looked at. And then we looked at the curriculum choices that were available to us. Um, we have adopted McGraw-Hill and Benchmark as our language arts program. But as previously stated, there wasn't enough within our language arts, our current language arts program. We also looked at Zane Blosser, um, Savas, and Handwriting Without Tears. We did have a tie between Savas and Handwriting Without Tears. Um, so one of our tiebreakers, as we went back and rethought some things, was we realized that in TK and K, we are currently using Handwriting Without Tears. So now we, if we chose that, we would have a consistent program from TK to sixth grade, and it would help with the transitioning going from manuscript print into cursive writing. We have already um, had, excuse me for saying um so much, but we have already had our public review. We are now just waiting for final approval. Once we have that, we will schedule some trainings because we know we need them. And I cannot teach cursive writing because I probably have the world's worst mm -hmm. handwriting. <laughs> yes. Um, but this is where we're at right now with cursive writing. Are there any questions? Well, I, I do have a, a question. <laughs> I, I do. I just. I want. I have a question. Um, when when does a child really use cursive? When do, will they be needing to use cursive? So in education. Oh, or later in life. Yeah, in this in the process in whatever. If they want to read historical documents, 
They need to recursive. In which format? To sign their name. Uh, I'm just waiting for this. We understand. <laughs> I, I get your question. Um, she doesn't have an answer, and we're not going to put her on the spot. I, I, I don't have an answer. I can tell you when they will begin yes. transitioning into cursive, which would be in second grade, the second half of second grade. They'll start transitioning from manuscript to cursive. But if there's no other questions regarding cursive, then I will move on to Thank a, you. another fun topic which is Proposition 28. So it's also known as the AMS grant, the Arts and Music and Schools funding program. So I'm really excited about this proposition because I really believe that it's good for kids and students love art. Proposition 28 or the AMS grant um, provides funding to expand or add to our current art programs which have been lacking. This grant is all about putting the groove back in our schools. It's about picturing this kids having more paintbrushes, you know, paint fights in the classroom, you know, more guitars, and my favorite, which I'm sure the custodians absolutely hate, more glitter on the classroom floors. So I'm excited to have that. Um, it is about making sure that every student gets a chance to strum a chord, create a masterpiece by painting one or sculpting one, and maybe even busting a move. So in February, the funds were allocated um, to our school sites for this grant. But prior to receiving these funds, they were required, each site was required to develop a plan um, to determine how they were going to bring the arts into their school and what type of discipline in the art area that they were going to bring into their school. 80% of the funds are for certificated or classified employees to provide arts education, while 20% can be used for supports and materials, as well as bringing in educational partnership programs in the area of arts. And up to 1% can be used for administrative costs. As the site started to, to develop their plans, they, had, they were required to put together a team. And their team consisted of students, parents, and staff. Their plans were also had to be approved by their school site councils, which they, every one of them have already been. They were asked to not only put together their team, but also to put a survey out and gather input as to what type of art discipline each school site would like to see at their school. So not only was the survey results used as their evidence of what they would like to see at their school, but also we had to look at the participation rates in the high school programs as well as our elementary ELOP programs. And that is what we use to consider the types of discipline that would be put into the schools. These are the, five, the main disciplines that they did have to choose from, but they also had to directly tie st art standards to whichever one of these disciplines they were going to use. And when you get to look at their plans, um, which I'm really proud of the work that they did, you will see that they didn't just choose one standard. There were multiple standards that they were able to tie to these disciplines. Are there any questions? Do we have this PowerPoint? Yeah, you have it. Because I was following, but I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. There's no questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation on um, student services update. Is that Mr. Schlosser or is that Trine? My name's not here, so it should be the superintendent. Last month, um, Susan made a public comment, and I appreciate that you're here tonight, Susan. The one thing I want to um, recognize is one of the things that I asked was based on the transcript of the public comment, I wanted to identify the things that seemed to be the issues that came forward. And so those are here. 
I want to start by saying this is um, always our intent to build relationships with our teachers, with the SELPA, and the, everybody that we're working with. And this has been a very difficult transition. Um, SACE across this valley um, through the um, process just did not go as it was intended to. And so um, these were the things that came out. Teachers missing students on their caseloads. They were. They were. They were not there. In fact, we still had a site that did not have any students as of last week because um, they've disappeared. They're just not there. So they're working on that. We're not sure if it's because of CalPADS and another school that's named the same, but it's gone. So they're working through that. SELPA is aware. Students unaffirmed means if the teacher works on their AP, it gets erased. That's correct. So initially, when, when teachers had access, if they had not had their initial IEP affirmed and they went in and did some work on it, whatever they worked on disappeared. That was not an Apple Valley Unified issue. That was a, an issue across the implementation. Many teachers had reached out to student services about missing or unaffirmed students with no response. I don't know the dates to that. We would like you as a team, um, Avuda, to work with um, student services to identify what those, um, th what those communications were that there were no responses. Because here's what I will tell you. In October for eight straight days, we closed the student services department for access. We had substitutes in there answering phones. And it is very possible that during that time there were calls made to the substitutes who were in student services because we had everybody else along with some trained um, other substitutes in a room. And I'm talking late at night, very late at night, working to um, enter student information so that the teachers were not having to do that. And so that there is a, a great possibility that in October during those eight days, there were there was times where people called and left messages and people didn't get them. So um, we acknowledge that. Um, September training in SACE was too short. It was two hours. Um, this was intended to be a technical process for us um, accessing SACE. It truly was just about how do you get in, not really how to navigate the entire system because it is vastly different. Um, November, they finally did have access to their IEPs. And again, we had some issues with affirming and you know, not unaffirmed um, students when they were working on them losing data. December, staff received two emails that many teachers reached out due to confusion regarding the emails. The confusion caused a request for training via an email with a response from student services, a good idea. This is directly from the, the um, presentation last month. So I just wanted to acknowledge all of the things. Um, January, more emails about SACE from student services, and again, a request for training without a response. And I think what we've recognized is there was a change from um, a, a representative as the, the special ed representative to our district, um, the Abuda representative, um, was changed over winter break. And so I think we probably needed to do a better job of saying, what kind of um, communication do you need to know that we're working on this? Um, and that's just us learning together. And then um, after the beginning of February, special ed committee met and it went very well. However, they heard nothing about training dates. Um, again, that's a what, what do you need and how can we provide that information back? They emailed student services uh, that they emailed student services about training dates and large caseloads 10 days later received a response. One was the Saturday prior to the last board meeting as was um, presented. One was the Saturday before Easter that ended up getting canceled. And was, one was Wednesday, um, April 17th. So you're gonna see in some of the slides that there, there was um, maybe a belief that we had not been working with SELPA directly for these trainings. And, and what I'm gonna show you is some things that while we internally as district administration were very aware of the things that were happening myself as the superintendent and all the other superintendents that are tied to the um, CalHelp JPA, um, we're receiving updates pretty much sometimes daily, but every week with um, on Friday if the system wasn't up and running. So um, as of December, we were on like update number 15. I don't, I'm just throwing that out. It was crazy. And I know that Pam Bender is the director of um, the SELPA being new. Um, this was a huge issue for her to take on and um, try to support us as districts. Then um, there was a belief that if we had contacted SELPA earlier in the year, they 
may have had more than two days notice um, and would have been available during work hours or during the work week. You'll see um, during the presentation that there are some things that we took on for the SELPA because they asked us to. Um, you would think that your teachers and providers would want to be properly trained to fill out the information. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a priority. When I show you the dates that we, the things that we did do, I will tell you that we pulled a, a coordinator from the majority of the work that she was doing to do nothing but this SACE transition and training. It was a priority to us. Um, large caseloads are an issue, and we are doing a full audit of our caseloads. There's definitely some um, terminology, terminology issues with credentials that Dustin is working through, and um, things like ed code that doesn't that is from an old credential that we, we do have staff that have that credential and that presents um, some issues having to do with caseload. So um, we'll work through all of those. We will meet with Abuda to negotiate, discuss, do whatever we need to do to get those um, solidified. And then um, what I keep saying, better communication and follow through. I think the plan um, to solve these problems you're gonna see was not something that they could solve on their own because it was not theirs to fix. Um, they had no um, access to the entire SACE system. They were at the, the um, whim basic, basically like all the other districts as to how to get this moving. So um, I hope I captured the information appropriately and the special education information system is the, 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 the actual terminology, it is what it's called. And so SACE is the abbreviation for that, Journey into SACE. As a reminder, CalHelp JPA is um, member districts. It's not the same in every SELPA. We are a member district to the CalHelp JPA and those are all of the school districts or charters that are involved. I have one vote um, to represent our district as do all other districts that are represented there. I will tell you that when you see the timeline, um, uh, that you're, I'm going to also share with you some discussions that are not on the timeline that happened far before um, the timeline began. This is a general overview. Special education data system changed from Web IEP, which you have heard, to the special education information system. This was intended because it was the best program out there to modernize our current system. We are probably one of the only SELPAs that use Web IEP. Local, the local um, Desert Mountain SELPA lacked direct experience and expertise. They came to our team for that because they did not have it, had not been users. The SACE vendor did not meet initial timelines and caused delay in, tra in data transfer and operational readiness. And as, as I mentioned earlier, Phoenix is still an issue. <coughs> Um, the major change has been challenging for all staff and incredibly difficult for some that technology in itself is difficult and now we have a system where you, you can't just cut and paste things. You actually have to use drop downs and create goals that are specific to each student. So it is a major change. Um, at this point, most users indicate comfort with the system. Comfort doesn't mean expertise. It just means a beginning and that they're going, it's going to start becoming more natural to them but it's not completely natural yet. I will also tell you that our district was looking at a change for our ARI system because it is not as robust as we need it to, do, to be. And we delayed that change over due to this change because we knew we could not do both things in one year. We're not gonna do it next year either. I don't know where Jason is, but we're not doing it next year either. We, we know that change is hard. So while this timeline starts on December 14th, 2022, I will tell you that is um, from the time I became superintendent, um, the Avuda representative for special ed had approached me multiple times regarding a request to ask SELPA why we could not move to the SACE system. They had used it in a previous district. They had friends in other districts in the state that were using it. They had seen how robust it was. And I went to David Wheeler and I did say, David, is this a discussion at Steering? And he said, well, it's kind of a discussion, but there's really no movement on it. So then I went to the previous director of SELPA, which was Janae Holtz, and I had a conversation with her. That stayed on a list of things that was to be presented to the entire board. And so I will take responsibility for reaching out, but it was because I was advocating on behalf of our staff that had requested it. 
So our timeline here starts with December 14th, 2022. This is the initial email and survey from Desert Mountain um, SELPA to the special ed directors. And I want you to notice December 14th and then the next one's December 15th. And there's lots of slides with these same pieces of information to just kind of inform you of all the communications that occurred. That first email was to identify staff who had any prior experience with SACE that, that existed in any of the member districts and that they were planning to shift to SACE in July of 2023. I know that shifting an entire system in that short of a timeline would be difficult. I knew that when they presented it, but they seemed to have a plan. All of the superintendents were in support of it and we moved forward. The following day, the steering committee, which is representatives from every district as directors, went and the SELPA announced to them that the pending change of this special education information system. And then the rollout timeline for trainings was coming. They didn't have one. That may have been our first clue that this was not going to go as well as they had indicated they thought it would. And then their goal was to have L staff trained before the school year began. February 16, 2023. A SACE introductory video was sent to district administration via email. April 4th, 2023, a year ago today, ABUSD Student Services Administration met with the De Desert Mountain SELPA program specialist overseeing the rollout. Nothing concrete had been disseminated. No district timelines had been established. We were not to create our own timelines because they wanted this to be a systematic approach. ABUSD did decide to do a sneak peek. So... <clears throat> Because we had a coordinator who had utilized this in a district, they were able to pull information and create a sneak peek for our staff. It was not intended to be interactive. It was intended to be flat screen pictures of what it looked like. April 10th, the following um, screen I'm going to show you is a timeline that was, that was provided six days after um, the fact that they had no concrete timeline, and it's listed as subject to change, as you can see. And this was the timeline that they established with still a target of August of 2023. Again, another um, important transition process with options that they provided. But we knew Web IEP was also going away. Again, another piece of information from the SELPA um, with all of the different things that they plan to do with a future progress of goal timeline and then supporting documents. Those are examples of what were sent and that we were utilizing. April 13th, 2023. So now you see there's this compression of information coming. ABUSD Student Services invites the Desert Mountain SELPA um, program specialist to our um, sneak peek. It's offered to ABOSD staff on April 27th, 28th, May 11th, and May 12th. And we're approaching the end of the year with those trainings. April 21st, 2023, Student Services requests to Desert Mountain SELPA any blank PDF pieces of SACE forms to be used for the, the SACE sneak peek. These PDFs were pro um, provided three days later on April 24th. On April 24th, we also received an email from Desert Mountain SELPA with their training dates for SACE and an FAQ page. These dates were intentionally pushed back to May so that the SELPA trainers could come observe the AVUSD sneak peek trainings. Desert Mountain SELPA used AVUSD as a pilot and for the district rollout because we had our own SACE expert. SELPA staff emailed student services on the 26th of April requesting AVUSD staff train our own. They were filling up the training dates and they knew they were going to exceed capacity and they needed to have somebody else do some of the training. So they requested that we do our own. Desert Mountain SELPA provided the slideshows they developed so that it was a consistent model of training across the valley. ABSD Student Services on April 28th um, emailed Desert Mountain SELPA and asked if they could reach out to another district or SELPA and get some guidance on how they rolled out SACE. There was no response provided. I will say that most likely there was no response provided. Well, that's not an appropriate answer. 
Most likely, no response was provided because most of them were already using SACE as an initial document. They weren't, they hadn't transitioned. And so um, they probably didn't have a real good transition plan out there. April 27th, 28th, May 11th, May 12th, July 31st, August 1st. The first four are all sneak peeks. You can see the number of staff, staff members that attended. Then on July 31st, again, we were supposed to be up and running. Emailed all staff that we still did not have access to staff, uh, to SACE software. August 1st, our first official SACE training was scheduled. You can see the attendees, two different sessions. April 23rd, May 23rd, Desert Mountain SELPA requested an all, that all web IEP documents and IEPs be closed May 31st, 2023. I, will, I recall being in the principal meetings about this because the principals were advocating on behalf of how do we do this? How do we get these shifted? What if we need help with, with entries? And student services was there to help. Um, we did bring substitutes in and do some of the entry because it was needed. Email reminders were sent to staff to complete all the IEP paperwork and get it finalized in web IEP. June of 2023, Students, um, student services sent the blank S um, SACE forms to Desert Mountain Sel SELPA to be used as fillable PDFs um, and asked about availability of Spanish forms because we knew we needed those Spanish forms, which when SACE is active, they're there. July 2023 received a sample slideshow and materials from the Desert Mountain SELPA was going to be sharing during their trainings. June 8th. Um, Desert Mountain SELPA notified districts that they had provided fillable forms for use over summer until SACE could go fully live. And you're going to see in a few minutes that wasn't great because those fillable um, PDFs didn't expand, had problems themselves. Desert Mountain SELPA notified the districts that SACE was not ready to be implemented and that the use of fillable forms would be the plan until future notice. The fillable forms that the Desert Mountain SELPA provided had formatting issues, like I mentioned. And so it caused IEP, IEPs to be rewritten and started over because the, the boxes wouldn't expand. August 23rd, 2023, remember we've already started school. Desert Mountain SELPA sends the first SACE update email responding to a list of complaints. And I've got the list, the list of complaints that were generated by multi-districts. They put them into categories, and they responded to them. They didn't make clear when they first sent out the fillable forms that we were requiring to have an, a full version of, the, of Adobe, which isn't a quick process. Like, you have to load that. You have to know that that's coming, and you have to have the licenses appropriate to, to make that happen. So in many districts, including ours, that prompted um, the people to start creating their own fillable forms, Word, Google, and Adobe. August of 20, uh, 24th, 2023, SELPA provided training accounts to school districts to train our, our own office staff. So even at that point, three weeks into school, our office staff still didn't have access to do any of the um, input. September 14th, received all staff SIS lo or SACE logins um, from the Desert Mountain SELPA. People had to go to training in order to get those logins. September 28th, 2023, SACE's real this time, training's offered. And I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed to stand here and report this, but it, this isn't an Apple Valley Unified, I'll keep saying this. This is a um, transition from a, one system to another that was not planned well, was out of our hands, and we're past that first initial part, but, but now we are going to have to continue to build the capacity. September, um, and, and you can see the number of attendees for both the September 28th and 29th um, trainings. And that's when, on September 29th, we found that Phoenix Academy had not been rolled over into SACE from Web IEP. October of 2023, trained the site's um, special ed leads on SACE. SACE office hours um, is, was another thing that was provided. Special education TOAs reached out to school sites. So we have two teachers on assignment that are special education. They offered um, office hours for SACE before school and after school. They also scheduled to be there one-on-one. -on -one. And from the logins of, from 
August to end of last week when I got the data, 532 entries of safe support in various degrees from these two teachers on assignment, whether it was um, during office hours or one-to-one -one support while they were trying, somebody was trying to do an IEP. Likewise, there were office hours here at the district office. And while those hours look horrible, um, they were um, manned. Um, Priscilla was here um, from 6 to 7.30 a.m. for people at the high school that might want to um, be have some office hours and have time individually. Um, likewise, 2 to 6, a variety of different times on all of those different dates. And then these are the dates where um, trainings for special groups and makeups, and you can just see all the different schools, the groups that had access on those dates and makeups for anybody that, that needed it. March 9th, ESC from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., nine attendees. March 30th was canceled due to the holiday, um, uh, which is, this is, these are the lists that, the dates that we had originally um, um, Susan had shared during her presentation. And then we added a new date, April 8th. Here at the um, district office, it will be SELPA trainers who were trained by our Priscilla. <laughs> but it is, um, the one difference is they did customize our trainings. So when we knew the room was going to have both technical questions and IEP questions having to do with SACE, the SELPA did provide us both, both types of um, support in the training. So they knew they had to be ready on the fly to support whichever the need was within the room. Um, and then April 15th, 22nd, 29th, they're again SACE um, IEP Learning Lab. Going forward, communication, what the frequency and type of that communication is, caseload, program definitions and targets, California Department of Education requirements, because we are held to the least restrictive environment. So these are all things going forward that we are working toward. Any questions? I do. I have questions. Um, I'm looking at the presentation you had uh, for us. Um, and I'm just a little bit very upset, upset to the point that there are special education students who may be missing in a data breach because SELPA did something and we are losing those kids. Those are people's children who require service. And somehow those people, those, that information is missing from somewhere. And, and I know it's not, it's not your place to, um, to um, answer that question, but perhaps that needs to go back to SELPA. We cannot afford to lose any of our kids. So they need to find those kids, put them back in, so that those teachers can do their job. I will say it's not it's not SELPA, it is SACE. Uh, whoever SACE put, is, but I, I understand. It, I, I do understand. You know, I, I went through the training of web IEP when I was mm -hmm. a special ed teacher. And the, no, 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 um, no system should be put in place a few days before school is supposed to start. I agree. And you didn't have it re ready to roll. And I recall at one of the, uh, the, the meetings here, and your director of special education informed us mm -hmm. that SELPA was going to load all of this in because yes. I asked that question. Yes. I said, who's going to load this information in the system? Because these teachers, IEP is still going on. The federal mandate still says 365 days IEP has to occur. Yes. And if those things are still going on, who is documenting that information to be able to put it into this new system that they are using. And I was given the uh, assurance that SELPA was going to put it in. They did. And SELPA obviously dropped the ball because you are saying that we have hired people to be in the back room to be able to enter things. And they are not SELPA people. So you are paying for those people to be in the place. Yeah. Let me, let me explain. So yes, what, what the agreement was, because of the way that you have to um, affirm an IEP, so they were using the timelines of students that needed their IEPs done at that time to get them entered by SELPA, SELPA staff was entering them, and our district made the decision we were going to enter all of our IEPs. We weren't just doing the ones that were due at that time because what we didn't want to do is have this rolling need of having them to be affirmed. 
And so Apple Valley is unique in the sense that we made the decision. We were also going to put the ones that were coming later into the system as well so that teachers that needed to do other things had access to their students. So while the, the SELPA did do some work and did all of the typing and all of the things that were mandated, I see Pat just turned his, his mic on. I'll let him, him respond as well. Well, I, the question, I'm going to finish my questions because okay. I, right now I'm just, I'm, I'm just beside myself, just hearing all of, all of you have evidence to show that you have done everything and you're following everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the when the students are not affirmed, uh, it just means that their information is missing. Something is it's not affirmed. Yes, you said yes, they are not affirmed. Many teachers have reached out to student services about these missing or unaffirmed students with no response. Um, and, and I'm not sure if we were able to answer that in terms of how quickly does student services or, or special ed department respond to teachers' requests. Because teachers still have a, a job to do. Mm -hmm. And the special ed department must respond to teachers when they have a, a, a question for them. Absolutely. They cannot be missing in action. When a teacher contacts the special ed department and says, these are the things I need you to please look into, and, and they can't get a response quickly, you know they're going to hit the frustration level. Mm -hmm. So special ed, 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 special ed department must come to the point where they must answer questions and not be someplace in the ether and we can't find them and these teachers are waiting for uh, answers. Um, the, then we had a training when the, one of the questions that was brought up to us, uh, it says at the beginning of February, special education committee met and it went very well. However, they heard nothing about training dates. If the training dates has been brought up twice and now there's a third time that we're now in the meeting situation and the person who sat in that meeting is still sitting waiting for a training date and a training date was not even brought up in that meeting. Somebody needs to have paid attention to say, well, these people are still expecting a training date. And to have a training date on a Saturday is absolutely preposterous for this district because I do know the superintendent we have who is always interested in people recharging. So to schedule a Saturday meeting for those teachers is unacceptable. We have Monday to Friday, use it. Don't use Saturday unless the teachers have said it's okay, we can use Saturday. But I don't, I don't want us to go into the habit of scheduling teachers on a Saturday when they are supposed to recharge and get ready to come back on a Monday. Yeah. The next question that I have is, because I am I'm a little bit irritated right now, because all of you do know that my background is special ed. So anytime that you do anything to one of those children that cannot represent themselves, I am always ready to fight back. So this one is particularly interesting for me. Um, large caseloads. These teachers are talking about large caseloads. Mm -hmm. How many of our teachers in this district are classified as resource specialist teachers? Because if they are classified as resource specialist teachers, I went to the website to look up the, all of the schools, and some of the schools still had teachers who are listed as RSP. And if they are listed as RSP, they must have no less, no more than 28 students. That's the law. We understand. And that. we can't change that. So when we have an RSP teacher, and I wrote it down because I was a bit, a bit, a bit miffed. I had an RSP teacher in one of the schools who has 30 students. How do you explain that? 30 students, an RSP. And yes, I do understand. I remember when this district went to SAI yeah. under the leadership of Ron Powell, and he explained what that was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So if we are going in the direction of SAI, then call it what it is. But if a teacher is classified as RSP, the teacher cannot exceed 28. If you exceed 28, you have some explaining to do. That is very important because I am just about to the point where I'm getting, I'm getting really angry that all of this is happening to special education, which is mandated by federal. Right. And right. we are violating all of these federal things because SELPA failed to do their job, and we are part of the consortium. Absolutely. Maria, I will tell you that we have um, discovered as they dug in on caseloads that there are multiple places where people are listed differently. You've identified um, site websites, school websites. RSP is listed there. We have places in Aries where a course is called RSP, the teacher is listed as RSP, and yet we have them listed in other ways in our EPIC system. So we have, that. that is part of the audit, 
if we have somebody listed at 28, they have to be, if they're listed as RSP until we get to the bottom of all of this, we have to balance caseloads. We met with all of the principals last week. We had them go into the caseloads. We talked about how they can balance those. Um, and they were working through that process. And as of last week, when after the meeting, they did check-ins with them. And so that is part of the conversation that we have to have with our union about how do we get to the bottom of, first of all, auditing all of the different places these people are listed so that it is not confusing and confirming that we all agree that this is what that person is intended to be doing. Okay, I so. do know that when a teacher is hired, uh, when I was hired in this district, I was not hired as an RSV teacher. I was not hired, hired as an uh, was hired as an SDC teacher. Right. So my contract would continue to read, you are continuing to be a teacher for the school district for this next year. Mm -hmm. There's no change in the language. You are just being offered one more year to continue your service. Right. So those teachers who were hired around the same time that I was hired, or even there about, they're still, their contract still reads whatever it is. And we need to go back and look at what language of the contracts, what the language says. And so even if you're calling them SAI and their contract still says that they are RSV by face value of their contract, we need to go back and revisit that. But I just, I'm, I'm a little frustrated that this, this is happening to special education and it had to come to the board. And I recall when he came and I said, I wanted to have a report back out in the public forum so that they brought the, the issue to public. We want to hear it again right. because you have done a fabulous job of presenting to us the, the um, itemized uh, steps of what the district has done. I wish there's a way we can go to the self and say, you have created more mess for us than we needed to create. Because you haven't done what you're supposed to do as part of, as a lead of our consortium. Yeah. There's always some things behind the scenes that I obviously can't disclose in public because of um, certain cir circumstances. And I will tell you that there are some things behind the scenes that I cannot disclose publicly. And so while you're angry, there are other people that are very angry as well. And things have been addressed and dealt with appropriately. And I'm very aware of how those things were, were addressed. So I want to I give you that. But I also want you to understand that we're not happy with the way this rolled. Um, we are very concerned that um, we are having to double do things. They're having to double do things. And we finally said, no more double doing. We have teachers that were handwriting IEPs instead of putting them on the form. They, they are not using FACE, even though they have access. And so we have to, we have to move into the, the technology now that we have it. And we need to support those that are struggling with the technology end of it. And so that's our biggest goal right now, along with building back whatever the need is so that we can support and move forward. Because we're not going to roll back. Like, I always think um, the rearview mirror is 2020 and that if we could have predicted all of these things. But I know in our system, when we do any kind of change, we talk about it a year ahead of time, Correct. unless there's some emergency. And while they talked about it a year ahead of time, they didn't talk about it in the time frame of here are the dates and here are the hard um, requirements. And if we don't meet those, we don't roll. That's usually, there's usually this out. And, and I um, fully remember when we were looking at changing from one email system to Google, um, we did this with lots and lots of communication. And where we found some errors is, you have to rely on people being able to take an email and understand what the content of that email is with checklists of things that they have to do. And we understand that frustration caused people not to necessarily read all of the emails. I know I was frustrated as the superintendent getting the emails with the updates. And so I can only imagine what everybody else was getting. And I wasn't getting the user emails. I was getting the updates on where we were in the system. Now that we have this information, what next? Um, it, it's a gathering. The groups need to come back together and we need to identify where, the, where, where there's still gaps. We need to fix anything that isn't fixed. But our biggest issue right now is the caseloads. And um, I think after there's some negotiations tomorrow, there's some great ideas on the table that um, Dustin's gotten permission to talk about with them tomorrow. And I can't say that I'm, I'm probably overstepping right now too, but I'm kind of excited. So um, We'll end on a happy note, I think, with maybe um, interest-based bargaining happening tomorrow with some, some things that might come out. Well, I'm more interested in seeing the training happening. 
because the training has to happen. And the teachers need to know how to fill out this paperwork because uh, special education is about paperwork uh, and it's about having that paper trail um, in case the auditors come. Yes. And so we need to make sure that the paperwork is done right. So if there's a way to have an outside person to come and look at all of our paperwork and begin to clean it up for us. Because one thing we do not want is to have an, an outsider that has been hired by another outsider to come in and audit us and find out that things didn't happen the way they should. Yeah. So we need to find a way to clean it out and have the training for the teachers that need it when they need it. Um, and, and that needs to happen quickly. You know, we can't wait anymore. Yeah. Um, we will provide training, whatever the need is. I will also let you know that principals, um, because of the platform, are able to go in and look to see who's still outstanding, who's unaffirmed, who has needs. We also set up a system um, when we had a conversation with principals last week that I don't want them emailing to say I'm about to do an addendum or that I need something affirmed so I can do an addendum. I said I want you as principals to um, put it on the list so that it's viewable and seen so that they're not having to do this phone call or email back and forth. We have Google Docs. There's a very easy way for a list to be seen and people to affirm so that we're communicating faster and being more efficient. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Thank you. I'm glad I went um, in the middle between cursive that we don't know and a, a hard topic to... Um, Ms. Rose, who's about to nutrition probably services. I didn't know the way share food. Go share food. Them. You have one more presentation on nutrition services, and she's got treats. So, yeah, exactly. Okay, the next next presentation is on on the nutrition services. Jason, it's doing it for me again. I wish you had given me a heads up. Come on. Oh, all I had to do is walk over. I appreciate your presence. All I had to do is walk over. Rose, you want this here? Sure. Okay. That advances the slide. The one on the bottom? Yeah. Good evening. I want to introduce um, Rose Stark, is our Director of Nutrition Services. Um, she's been with us for how many years now, Rose? Eight. Okay, Eight. Eight. Put you on the spot. Eight, Make think. me count. Um, she is here tonight to share not only some statistics about our Nutrition Services Department, but also some of the great things we're doing in our schools for kids uh, and for nutrition. And there's, there's a slide at the end where she's going to talk a little bit about taste testing, and I'll be passing out some taste testing items for you when she gets to that point. So, yes, there's one for you too, Dustin. <laughs> Good evening. Um, thank you for having me here, um, Board of Trustees, Cabinet, and our guests. Um, so, like I said, I'm Rose. I'm the Nutrition Services Director. And my first slide here talks about some statistics, some statistics, fun word to say, um, within our department. So we've served over 360,000 breakfasts, and this is as of March 1st of this year. Um, we're coming close to a million lunches served this, up to March 1st also. And let me just say, we couldn't do that without the amazing staff that I have. They are some amazing people, and they, they make miracles happen every day on the, on the campuses to get all these students fed. Um, and then a thank you to our Board of Trustees and for working with us and bringing early our community eligibility provision that we implemented, which allowed more of our students to get meals. And we don't want any kid to come to school and be hungry. They can't think. They can't study. They can't learn when they're hungry. So... We're just, thank you so much for helping us to start that before it became a, a statewide mandate to do that. Um, and you can see on our slide here, we're also showing an increase over last year. So at breakfast, we've increased six and a half percent, lunch, 5.4 percent, and our supper program has increased a whopping 18 percent. Um, 
we are looking at next year adding two more schools to our supper program. So we should see a doubling at least of what we're doing in our supper program. Um, we're only doing snacks now at one school for after school programs. So our Apple High School has done 2,600 snacks and we provide uh, snacks for the ELOP programs, the extended learning opportunities. Um, and we've, uh, I keep saying, um, sorry about that. Um, we have sold $34,000 worth of snacks for our students so that they have something to eat when they're there later doing their um, activities. So. <laughs> <laughs> but before Rose clicks, well, actually, she oh, clicked to the next click. slide. Don't, yeah. don't, don't click I'm, it back. You're I fine. Won't, I, won't. I just want to remind everybody, Rose did mention that community eligibility provision. And that's a great program that allows, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again so everybody understands, every student in Apple Valley Unified has the opportunity to eat breakfast and lunch every day at no cost. So uh, you look at those participation numbers, um, that's more kids getting the food they need uh, every day at all of our schools. And I can say that we're very near a thousand being served every day at Granite, Apple, and Sitting Bowl. Those, those three are rock stars there. It is serving a lot of kids. Um, so on this slide, we're showing some of the other programs that we do. So we have our fresh fruit and vegetable program that we have currently at Rancho Verde and Yakaloma. And we're looking at next year, extending that to Sandia and Sycamore Rocks. So we'll have four sites participating in the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. And we are coming up on our farmer's market for our Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. <laughs> I like saying that. Um, so that'll be on May 9th at Rancho Verde and May 16th at Yakaloma. And, you know, we'd love to see everybody out there, you know, while we're out doing that. It's for most of the day, basically, because we have to set up a schedule for all the classes to come through. And we have our probably Farmer Anna, maybe Farmer Teresa that will come out and she will sit with the students and we bring them through by classrooms and she gives them. Where's the overalls? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, she wears the overalls and the, and the hat and they bring crates of different fruits and vegetables for the kids, for the students to sample and then they get to choose their uh, like three different things that they get to put in their little bag and take home with them for something to try later. And if they get to do them, they, they put the Oro, Oro Grande, um, Oro, Oro Blanco, not Grande, Oro Blanco, um, grapefruits in there. And they're like this big. You actually have one of them in your basket. Um, and they're usually very popular because they're such a really big fruit. And it's actually a blend of a grapefruit and a pomelo. So it, it provides a kind of a unique flavor and not quite as bitter or tart as the actual grapefruit would normally be. So again, we'd love to see you out there. And if you just let us know, we can give you an idea. You can get the schedule if you want to see a particular class go through or something like that. But you know, and you can sample the things too. They love to have everybody sample their, their produce. Oh, and they talk about the superpowers of each one. So whichever ones they bring there, they it has, you know, whatever special vitamin or makes your bones strong or, you know, things like that. They tell you all about it. So the kids get very excited about that. And they love to, you know, know what, what those things that they're eating provide for them. Um, and the cell bars, I, I did mention that we are going to be expanding our cell bars also next year. So we currently have them at, or did I say that? I don't remember. Um, so we currently have them at Rancho Verde and Yakaloma. Those are our rock stars. They started out all of our salad bars and our fresh fruit and vegetable program. And they just they say, give me more. They love to do things for the students. Um, so we'll be expanding that to Sandia and Sycamore Rocks next year also. And we do some, when we, when we start a new salad bar at a school, we make a schedule with the school and we do a training where every student in the school comes in and they sit with us and we talk about the salad bar and salad bar etiquette and what they're going to see on there and how they're going to walk through and, and get their things off the salad bar. Um, and I just say that our youngest students can be a little bit of a challenge to get them to sit still for very long <laughs> and listen to our, 
our speech. We tried to do little pantomimes of going through there. And if, oh, I dropped that spoon. What am I going to do with that spoon now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And, oh, I like that. Let me reach under there and grab that. No, you can't do that. You know, so we do little um, training sessions with them so they can learn how to do that. Some of the schools do choose not to do their TK and kindergartners with the salad bar until closer to the end of the year as they're getting ready to transition into first grade. So they get an idea of that process when they're a little bit more comfortable with uh, handling all the food and the trays and things, because it can be a little awkward handling the trays. Um, we also have our classroom celebrations and special events that we do. So we provide um, I have perfect attendance awards, say, and the principal wants to have um, a pizza party with the students to celebrate their perfect attendance. Or a teacher decides they want to have a birthday celebration for all the students once a month or something. They can get with us and we can do a special celebration pizza party for them with a treat. Uh, we can do a whole, whole school special menu if they want to do um, like a field day, kind of go out, have have their food on the in the in the field, basically. Uh, so they can be outside. They don't have to sit in the cafeteria every day. Uh, we have worked with see, DK, I think was one of them, where they, they do the, the Lunar New Year and they request a special lunch for that. Uh, so we do we can, we can customize different lunches for different events that they want to do at their schools. Um, and uh, you'll see some slides on our taste testing that we do. So that is we do it wherever we can to try to get our kids, our students a chance to try some of the new things that we want to bring in. And we take their feedback on that. And if it tests well, we will bring it into the menu to see how it goes on the menu with more students. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not as great as a hit, but you know, we wanna give the, kid, the students a chance to make that um, contribution to what we're actually putting on the menu. And when we wanna try something new, I think our biggest hit has been our French toast casserole. I wish I could have made that to bring tonight for the sampling, but it was that would have been a little more difficult to do. Um, and then the last thing on the slide, I wanted to mention that we will be celebrating Lunch Hero Day on May 3rd. So if you get a chance and you're out at the school sites, please just pop in and say thank you to all of our, our great lunch heroes. And now for the fun part, the pictures. <laughs> so here is pictures on the left of our fresh fruit and vegetable program. Um, you can see they're all, well, actually the first thing is the citrus medley. That's one of the things that we get from Old Grove Orange. Um, they put together three different kinds of oranges, a cara cara, a navel, and I can't remember the third one that they put in there, but three different types and there's slices so the kids get to try different things. And then we have our coolers that we put everything into. Um, so you can see them all staged up at Rancho Verde ready for the students to come and um, wheel them back to the classroom so that they can have their, their fresh fruit or vegetable snack for the day. And then on the right, we've got our salad bar again at Rancho Verde set up and ready to start service for the day. And they try to keep the cleanup easier. So they put all this plastic around there to grab everything and, and hold it together when they're ready to clean everything out. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Rose. I always seem to have technical difficulties. <laughs> It's okay. Last time it, went, it actually moved for me yeah. eventually. So here's a, um, a lot of the things we've been doing in each of the schools. We, um, we got some funding that we were using to make some improvements. So Mariana is our first one. You can see on the left top picture, we have Mariana storeroom before they did everything. Then next to it, it it's showing it almost finished. And then on the picture next to it shows it completely finished and all loaded back in there. Um, we purchased a steamer for Sandia. We've gotten some new warmers. Rancho Verde got a new oven. We got Robocoos for all the sites. Those are basically fancy food processors. Uh, so they can do a lot more of the, the fresh vegetables and things like that and process them a lot quicker. You can see in this picture, they were processing cucumbers. Um, Yakaloma got a brand new sink and our maintenance department did an amazing job. They had, had to take everything out and redo the wall and everything, put the, um, I think it's FRP on the back so that it's easy cleaning and keeps everything nice and neat. And down at Phoenix Lower, we, our maintenance department again, has 
helping us clean out our storeroom and modernize it, taking out some very old dark shelves and we put in our brand new shelves and um, some more storage type equipment. And this is pictures of our taste testings that we've done. And here we're gonna be passing out some of the baskets. Um, so when we do taste testings, it's not usually this many items, but we'll have this inside there, you'll, you'll find a little sticker for you too that says official taste tester. Um, and so the students are given a variety of different items <laughs> that they, uh, they taste for us and then they um, take, take a ranking sheet and they, they tell you what you think about it. Um, so we can get an idea if, if it's a hit or not. Uh, so we, we did a sitting bowl group uh, for them and we have we done a lot of the student advisory ones. Uh, so we've done here several times and HDPA and the HDPA was amazing. They were a really wonderful group to work with. And then we're going to be doing another taste testing on Tuesday here as we're, we're out to bid on our pizza. So we're going to bring our different pizza bidders in here for our students to taste them to tell us which one they want us to bring in for them. So <laughs> we want everybody's opinion, though. So if you guys would look at these, these, some of these things are things that we are serving currently. Some of them we are not serving and we're doing taste testing on. Some of them were very popular in taste testing and some of them were not. So I would like to hear from you guys once you taste test a few things and tell me what you think. Because all of these things are things that we can or do or, or will serve to our students. <laughs> and you're welcome to trade, of course. <laughs> But and any questions for me? Thank you, Rose. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm going to visit um, the nutrition services um, when I come back from Washington, D.C. Um, so uh, save a plate for me. They're in a new location, so don't go to a trailer. They're not in there. Oh, where are you now? In my old office in oh, Ed okay. Services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Kylie, do we have any public comments? We do. We have one. Thank you. Uh, Javier Alcantara Roya, Rojas. Uh, thank you, Madam, uh, Madam President, um, Trine, esteemed board, and uh, guests. Um, I rise before you today to advocate for AMS and Prop 28. Uh, it really warms my heart to hear all of the amazing things that are going on from all of the programs and to see this, the shirts on some of the schools which are advocating for the importance of the arts and to hear from the board members as well. To know that you guys support the arts is very uh, comforting to hear. Uh, but I must uh, rise to just say that it, for with the rollout, it really helps and is beneficial to be included. I understand that because some of the money was released in February, I had come before you guys in December and um, and I think in January to speak on that. And at that time, I had hoped that we would, you guys would see the benefit uh, of a VAPA coordinator because there are certain gaps that I, I, I feel need to be addressed. And with this Prop 28 money, I had hoped that some of those would be addressed and to hopefully be included in those discussions. And unfortunately, I, ha I rise to say that I, it was not, the rollout was I think maybe just because of time, it took a little bit and it wasn't rolled out as effectively. And I know that at least for, I can only speak for myself, but I don't feel that, especially with all the expertise that I have working as a leader for the state, as a model technical demonstration site for the California Department of Ed, 
serving as um, the San Bernardino County Music Educators Association High School Honor Band representative, and uh, recently winning the NAM, the National Association of Music Merchants Best Schools uh, for Music Education, which is a testament to uh, all of our, all of your support, uh, Theta, uh, Adam, our cabinet. It's an award that represents all of the collective hard work that we do. It feels very disappointing to not be included in those discussions uh, after I've come to the board, to the cabinet, and all I'm asking is just to be included in those discussions so that that expertise can be uh, utilized for the students of Apple Valley and to the programs. In addition, I've been um, working with uh, reading through the uh, California Arts Framework Standards, and I've been developing curriculum that I think would be uh, very beneficial. So I'd like to present that uh, the next time I come and speak with you next month. I appreciate uh, your uh, attention, and I hope that you will continue, uh, as we all are doing, to support the arts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board comments, Mrs. Buchanan? No. Mr. Arce? Nothing further. I have one more. Uh, I just wanted to use this opportunity to congratulate Mrs. Buchanan for being selected um, by uh, the California School Boards Association uh, membership to represent us in the de as a delegate um, at the state level. Um, this was not an easy task. Um, there were quite a few people that uh, entered for that uh, to be able to be uh, considered. And so for her as a freshman mm. to be um, recognized by other school boards, because every school board had one vote. Uh, so to be recognized by other school boards in our, in our region um, to vote her in to mm. represent us, I feel truly honored because Apple Valley is finally uh, one of the delegates and uh, usually you see people from Upland and everywhere else but Apple Valley. So to have her as a delegate is something to be proud of. Congratulations. <laughs> Mrs. Nelson. Yes. I think it must be in the water in the area that Amanda represents because the last time we had a delegate was um, Wilson So in, mm -hmm. in the same in area, area, right? So you're carrying on the tradition wonderfully. Um, I did have a second comment in response to the board's approval of the consultant agreements um, last month. Ky Kylie will be reaching out to schedule a workshop likely at the very end of April. I know that we've got people traveling, so um, we've grabbed some of those dates and she'll get with you and see if that will work. Um, the workshop would cover gener the general obligation bond and the COP financing um, certificate of participation um, financing for the Granite Hills High School Stadium and the TK classrooms. And then during the May 16th board meeting, we plan to have True North um, Research and Clifford Moss, the communications, um, which are the consultant agreements that you approved at the last board meeting. They will be presenting an, a review of general obligation bond survey process and data. And most likely that'll be virtual. They'll be virtual in through our um, screen and everybody will hear it. And then during the June 13th, 2024 board meeting, um, we'll review the general obligation bond financials and a draft of a resolution. Most likely um, the bond council will be pre um, present to provide that this information. And then if we, re if we decide to proceed after that, then um, we probably will need a special board meeting at the at very late April in order to deal with an adoption of a resolution. And that's just if all of these things line up and you decide that's the direction we're going to um, go. Okay. Thank you. Late July. Did I say June? I said April. You said late April. July. <laughs> that's why she sits here to like smack me and tell me the right thing. She didn't smack me. All right. I'll just thank you. All right, public hearings must remain open for one minute. Conduct a public hearing to receive comments from the public or interested parties regarding the adoption of the statutory school fees as justified by the fee study and subsequently adopt resolution 2324-18, increasing the level one statutory school facility fees imposed on residential and commercial industrial construction 
pursuant to Education Code Section 17620 and Government Code Section 65994. Time open is 9.18. Any comments? None? You guys are all thinking? Okay. Can I do it Dennis' way? <laughs> Dennis has a different time. <laughs> yeah, he just. <laughs> I think it'd be better than Yeah. That's what she was just saying. Just pretend a minute. Is nine nine <laughs> is is now nine nineteen. I'm closing it at nine nineteen. <laughs> okay. This in close session. Go ahead. No, I'm I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Hopar. I do need a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Uh, resolution uh, 2324-18 to adopt the fee set study and levy the revised uh, fees. All right. I'll make the motion that we go ahead and adopt resolution 2324-18, increasing the level one statutory school facility fees imposed on residential and commercial industrial construction pursuant to Ed Code Section 17620 and Government Code 65995. I'll second. Uh, you want to call for the vote? <coughs> we're waiting because it wasn't on my on my sheet. So we're waiting to see if there's a vote required. Okay. <laughs> Just one second. <laughs> You have it on my list because it was a public session, a hearing us and comments. It does say and subsequently adopt a resolution. So don't we have to make a motion to adopt it? Where? Where do you see it? That's part of our. Matt, is the resolution listed under um, consent someplace? Because it's not. We didn't do it as a separate. No, it's uh, the recommended action as part of the public hearing. Is to hold the public hearing and subsequently adopt resolution 2324-18. Okay. And then I move to make the action to adopt. And you seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? If we're wrong, we'll be corrected down the road. I think we just <laughs> go ahead Seems and legit to me. Resolution is attached I mean, to the attached item. To yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. They were close to it, so go ahead. <clears throat> Monday. Okay. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees discuss and take action on the following items. Uh, number one, approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case uh, EXP number 15, 2023-2024. I need a motion. So moved. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. And then that we approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case EXP number 16, 2023 2024. I need a motion. So moved. All second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case EXP number 17, 2023-24. I need a motion. So moved. I'll, I'll second. second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Um, and for... 
expulsion. We are going to um, uh, approve amended. the recommendation amended to read for expulsion case EXP 18 2023 24. It's going to be amended to read student to be placed on a suspended enforcement of expulsion to High Desert Premier Academy for the remainder of the 2023-24 spring semester and to Apple Valley High School for the 2024-25 fall semester. Student is to complete the terms and conditions of their rehabilitation plan prior to the end of the 2024-25 fall semester. I need a motion. So moved. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Approve the recommendation as amended to read. For this case, is like, number. we're so back and forth. Okay. 19. So for number 19, 2023-24. So as amended to read. Student to be placed on a suspended enforcement of expulsion to High Desert Premier Academy for the remainder of the 2023-24 spring semester and to Apple Valley High School. For the 2024-25 fall semester, student is to complete the terms and conditions of the rehabilitation plan prior to the end of the 2024-25 fall semester. Again, that's expulsion case EXP number 19, 2023-20. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case EXP number 20, 2023 24. I need a motion. So moved. All second. All in favor. Any discussion? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Um, approve as recommended. Amended. Amended to read on expulsion case EXP twenty one number twenty one. 2023-24, amended to read, student to be placed on a suspended enforcement of expulsion to High Desert Premier Academy for the remainder of the 2023-24 spring semester um, and to Apple Valley High School for the 2024-25 fall semester. Student is to complete the terms and conditions of their rehabilitation plan prior to the end of the 24-25 fall semester. And again, that's expulsion case EXP number 20, 2023-24. 21. 21. Just kidding. Sorry. 21. I went to the wrong color code. Mm -hmm. I need 21. a motion. So moved. I'll second it. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Wait, there's another one. All right. Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case EXP number 22, 2023-24. My motion to approve. All second. All in favor? Discussion. No discussion. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's more. Oh my gosh. There's more. I just didn't color code them. You didn't do two. Do I just approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on admission case AD number four, 2023 24. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? None. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case EXP number 19, 2022 23. So moved. I need a motion. I, I move. 
second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on annual review AR number 12, 2023, number 24. I need a motion. So moved. Any discussion? I'll second. And <laughs> any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, item, go to item two. <laughs> she didn't, and there's no script. Okay, <laughs> approve the certificated and classified personnel actions as listed. I need a motion. So moved. A second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Approve the recommendations for requested leaves as noted. I need a motion. So moved. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Adopt resolution 2324-17 authorizing the issuance of 2024-2025 tax and revenue anticipation notes for the Apple Valley Unified school district and requesting the board of supervisors of San Bernardino County to issue said notes. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second any discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve increasing the contract amount on the cost accounting agreement for the Sitting Bull Gymnasium audiovisual renovation. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, consent agenda. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees consider approving a number of agenda items as a consent list. Consent items are routine in nature and can be enacted in one motion without further discussion. This procedure conserves meeting time for a full discussion of sig significant issues. Consent items to be approved in one motion are 1 through 25. I need a motion. So, so moved. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve item 1 through 25. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So do any members of the board have any future items? <laughs> All right, we are going to adjourn this meeting. There, be, there being no further ish business to come before the board of trustees, it is recommended that the meeting be adjourned. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs>